Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Stand for the reading of the Word of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You may be seated, and I would like to preach on giving thanks. This passage of Scripture in the book of Ephesians is found in a section that describes for us the kind of life that's expected out of a child of God. And much of it has to do with our tongue, what we say. If you notice in verse 29 of the previous chapter, he said, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that may minister grace to the hearers. So, the Lord says that as part of his body, as a Christian, one way it shows up is in our tongue. No more corrupt communication, but rather that which is good to the use of edifying. Something that builds up. Something that encourages. It ministers grace unto the hearers. He details some of that corrupt communication in verse 4 of chapter 5. When he says that these are things that are not to be once named among you as become a saint, filthiness, which is obscenity or indecent talk, foolish talking, it's corrupt communication of any type, jesting. It is, um, uh, that word jesting means coarse joking, suggestive, suggestive jokes, suggestive talk. These are things which he says are not to be once named among the people of God. But instead of that, instead of obscenity and indecency and corrupt communication, which includes slander and gossip and backbiting, instead of those things, we're to rather give thanks so that the conversation of the child of God is to be marked by an attitude and spirit of thanksgiving. They are to be marked by giving thanks. Thanksgiving is not to be just a one-day um, celebration, but it is to be a year-round attitude in the life of the child of God. And that person who is thankful, that person who recognizes the blessings of God upon their life, is a person who will also be joyful. The Bible puts some things together in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. These three things go together. Rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks. And when we rejoice evermore, and we pray without ceasing, and give thanks in everything, Brother, that's a Christian that the devil cannot easily defeat. When he finds someone that's thankful, that's rejoicing, that's always praying. You know, thankfulness is dependent upon our recognition of the benefits provided to us from God. Pride says, I'm responsible for these benefits. I acquired this. I did this. But thankfulness says, God bless me. That the things that I have are from His hand. It's a recognition of our dependence upon God. That God gave it, God can take it away. Job understood that. I mean, he found it out. If he didn't understand it, he found it out. For in one day, the richest man of the East lost everything that he had. So, he uh, understood the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. But this was the attitude of the man of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that the child of God is thankful whether they have little or whether they have much, they are thankful to God. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The child of God is thankful, and his life demonstrates his thankfulness. 
Every time that he sits down to a meal, he demonstrates his thankfulness to God. For the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 4, in verse 3, he said, There are some that would forbid to marry and command to abstain from meat, which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And so the Christian, every time he sits down to a meal, demonstrates his thankfulness, bows his head, and thanks God for the meal he's about to eat. Brother, that is the Christian's attitude. He doesn't partake of God's benefits and blessings without first thanking God for what God has provided for him. So, every time a Christian has a meal, they give thanks to God for what they're about to eat. Brother, I think every Christian ought to be willing to do that, whether they're in private or public. In the house, whether they're in their own house, or in a, a public house, a restaurant. They ought to be willing to bow their heads and give thanks to God. When I was just a young man in high school, and God had saved me, and, and I was uh, zealous for the Lord, and uh, you know, uh, public school is not a place that uh, uh, you find an atmosphere that's conducive to righteousness. In fact, uh, it's an atmosphere that's uh, uh, just the opposite, in fact. And so, in my high school, uh, I went to uh, my lunch period, and every time that I ate my lunch, I bowed my head and said grace over the food. Well, nobody wanted to sit with me because... Who wanted to be seen bowing their head in a student body and giving thanks for their food? But I'm telling you, brother, this is the attitude of the Christian. Every time we sit down to eat, we give thanks to God for what God has provided for us. It may just be tomato soup and cornbread. But if God has granted to us something to preserve life, we give thanks to God for what He's given to us. Every Christian is thankful every time they sit down for a meal. We're to give thanks every time we go to God in prayer. No Christian ought to go to God in prayer asking for anything until they first thank God for what God has already given them. Philippians chapter 4. The Bible tells us in verses 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing. That means don't be anxious or troubled about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We're to let our requests be made known unto God. With thanksgiving. So that before we ever say, God, give me, we say, God, thank you for what you have already done for me. And answer the prayer. God's goodness and God's blessings are recognized in our life. Every time we go to God in prayer. Not only are we to give thanks to God when we're praying, but we're to give thanks to God in every assembly. You know, all of us, are, well I start to say all of us memorized this when we were children. I, I, I don't know that all of us did, but uh, when I was a child, this is one passage of scripture that all the children in school memorized. They memorized Psalm 23, they memorized Psalm 100. It says, let's make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving. Into His courts with praise. Uh, be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, and His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So that every time the child of God assembles together with the people of God in the presence of God, they come to give thanks unto God. Brother, when we've lived our life in thanksgiving unto him, when all week long we've been praising him, it's a simple matter. I mean, it's a natural thing to come to the house of God and give thanks to God and bless the name of the Lord for his goodness unto us. Isn't it amazing that we are so blessed? No people ever in the history of the world, as far as I know, no people in the history of the world has had the benefits and blessings we've got materially uh, as this people have in the United States of America. And to be so unthankful is a crime against God. God wants us to bless His name every day of our lives. 
God wants us to praise Him every day of our life. God wants us to assemble in the house of God to give thanks to God for the benefits and blessings that we enjoy. You know, Thanksgiving goes beyond that. For the Bible tells us in the Scripture, I quoted to you in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And brother, that means that whether your circumstances are favorable or not in life, you are to give thanks unto God. Oh yes. So, you know, this week may have been rough and tough on you. It's been rough and tough on me too. I was a long way from home by myself. My uh, shoulders are hurting me so bad. I couldn't sleep at night. Can't hardly turn my head now. You probably noticed it. And uh, I'm te- and had to preach a meeting and uh, couldn't hardly sleep. And, and I've had a rough week. But I'm telling you, God's been good to me. And I've been praising God and glorifying God. And it don't matter whether I can turn my head or not. God's good. I said God's good and God's gracious. And, and He deserves praise and honor and thanksgiving for what He's done in my life. I'm telling you to be saved this morning. If I'm dying, if God has saved my soul, and I've got something to be thankful for this morning, that God loved me enough to send His Son to die for me on a cross, and I've got a reason to be thankful this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. You had a rough week. Probably your neighbor did too. (laughs) Praise God. But is thou thanksgiving in your heart? Do you appreciate God's blessings? Can you say thanks to God for what God has done for you and in you? Hallelujah. You know, the Bible teaches us that in the last days, men would be unthankful. He said in Timothy, he said, perilous times would come. Dangerous times. And he gave the characteristic of men. He said they would be lovers of their own selves. And since they're lovers of their own selves, they're unthankful and unholy. You know, a person who is always, uh, uh, their life is centered around themselves, they're not thankful. No, they're not thankful for anything God does for them. They always feel like God didn't do enough. Are you one of them? That God has not yet done enough for you to be thankful. You know, in everything give thanks. So, I thank God for my mom. And I thank God for my dad. And I thank God for my brother. And I thank God for my sisters. And I thank God... Wait a minute, let's stop right there. Did you follow me? Did you say that in your heart? And I thank God for my job. And I thank God for the pay I get. Has God got to do something else for you thankful? Is there something else He's got to add to you before you can say thanks? Did you eat this week? Did you have somewhere to sleep? Did you have a roof over your head? Did you have heat in the cold? Did, 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 did God meet your needs? Hey, hey, hey! What has God got to do to you before you say, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me? One more thing, God. One more thing. Oh, no. If you're not thankful now for what God's doing for you, you wouldn't be thankful for whatever God did for you. I'm telling you, this is an attitude that God puts in our heart. This is an attitude that the Spirit of God sets up in our soul. Hallelujah. He causes us to be thankful whether we have little or whether we have much. In the last days, men would be unthankful. In the book of Romans, that was a sin that led to apostasy. It was a sin that led to idolatry. Men did not glorify God as God, and neither were thankful in their hearts, became vain in their imaginations, and, and set up idols, and, and uh, uh, slid into idolatry and immorality. And this was one of the sins that led to that. They were unthankful. Hey, how, does, how do you know a person's thankful? 
Can we say that a person's thankful because they go around saying, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God? Well, that really doesn't mean that they're thankful just because they say thanks. Here's the way that we show that we are thankful. We live for Him every day of our life. We give back to Him our heart, our life, our obedience. We demonstrate every day that we're thankful for what God has done for us by how we live and act and conduct ourselves. You know, and I'm going to close. Uh, I read and I've told you this before. I know maybe several times. But uh, it stood out to me years ago when I read this about a wagon train that was on the way out west. And it was a long, grueling journey. And the wagons were breaking down, wheels coming off, wagons mired in mud, having to pull them out. People were tired and worn out. And they were grumbling and complaining and there was strife. And finally they decided, we're going to stop and settle our differences and clear the air around here. Things are just getting awful. The atmosphere is getting awful. And so they decided that that night they would take their wagons and put them in a circle, have a meeting in the middle, and they would air their grievances. So they took their wagons and circled them that night, built them a campfire in the middle. Everybody assembled around the campfire. The leader stood up and said, we've been having problems and a uh, lot of strife and bickering and grumbling. And so uh, we want to clear the air and let you have a chance to have your say tonight in this meeting. But he said, before uh, we get into the uh, complaints, he said, let's, uh, let's thank God, first of all, that we're all still alive. That none of us has been killed. We haven't been attacked by the Indians. No disease has destroyed any of us or our children. And uh, we're still all alive. We've got food to eat. God's kept us with something to eat. And went on down the list telling about how the Lord had provided for them. Said, let's first of all give thanks to God. So they spent a little time thanking God for how God had kept them. All of them were still alive. None of them had died from an, uh, an Indian's arrow. None of them had died from a disease. They all had food to eat. They were all doing pretty good physically. And so they just get, spent time thanking God for how He blessed them. Well, after they got through thanking the Lord for His blessings, the leader said, all right, we've been having a lot of problems. We're going to open the floor now for anybody that's got any gripes and any grumbles. And you can go ahead and tell us what your complaints are. Let's clear the air around here. And so he waited and waited and waited some more. And waited a while longer. And nobody got up and said anything. Because after they counted their blessings, they decided they really didn't have anything to complain about. And my brother, when you and I begin to count our blessings and name them one by one and focus our attention on the blessings of God in our life, we'll find out we really don't have much to complain about after all. For the Lord has been good to every one of us. And every good gift and every perfect gift cometh down from above and from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Let me give you a few things to, th to think about, to be thankful for, okay? How about this nation you live in? Where you have the freedom to come and worship God this morning and nobody stood outside the door and threatened you if you came in this church to worship God. What about a nation where you have the privilege of choosing your leaders? You can go to the polls and cast a vote. Oh yeah, you say, what? You just take that for granted, you know, but there's some places that don't have that privilege. And a strong man rules. And you do what he says or else you wind up in a prison or you wind up missing. And nobody can say anything. Don't be thankful you live in a country where you can go to court and be assumed innocent until you are proven guilty. And that you can sit there 
and be judged by a jury of your peers. Oh yeah. Oh, I know that there's inequities in our, in our system. I know that there are people that are condemned that ought not to be. I understand that we're human beings. But I'm telling you, it's much better to go to a court and you're assumed to be innocent and have to be proved guilty than to go to a court and you're assumed guilty and you've got to prove yourself innocent. And it's much better to go to a court and feel, have a reasonable confidence that you can get a just sentence than to go to a court and know that the odds are stacked against you and it doesn't matter whether it's ju your cause is just or not. Oh yeah. You ought to be thankful that you live in a nation of laws. You know? So that when you get out here on the road and you start driving down the road, you've got confidence that while you stand on the right-hand side of the road, your neighbor's going to stay on, the, on his right-hand side too. And that there are speed limits like 55 miles per hour and 65 on the interstates. And yeah, I'm thankful for that. I tell you, when I was driving uh, 500 miles up yonder and 500 miles back, I got to thinking about that. Thank God for the laws that keep us from having chaos on our roads. I understand a few things to be thankful for. Are your children healthy? Brother, I'm telling you, if you've got health and your children's got health, that ought to be one of the things you thank God for every day of your life that God has given you health, given your family health. Brother, God wants us to be thankful to Him for the blessings He's bestowed upon our life. And finally, I want you to understand this, whether you've got health or not, whether you've got money or not, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for you so you won't have to go to hell. And brother, we all ought to praise Him every day of our life that the blood of Jesus stands between us and the awful guff of hell. We don't have to go to hell because Jesus Christ loved us and gave Himself for us on the cross of Calvary. Are you thankful this morning? Those are just a few things I want to call to your attention that you have to be thankful for every day of your life. And, and God wants us to be a thankful people. Don't let your conversation be marked by corrupt communication, but let it be marked by giving of thanks. Let's stand together. Father, as we come to the close of this service this morning, we give thanks to God for this day, this Lord's Day, that we have the privilege to assemble in the house of God and hear the Word of God and sing the songs of Zion and feel the presence of God, hear the voice of the Lord speak to our hearts. Father, there are times we need correction and the house of God provides correction for us. Sometimes, Lord, we forget we forget the things, the main things in this life. And the house of God is where we're reminded of those things that are most important. Thank you, Lord, for the presence of God that it comes to us in our time of need and comforts us and strengthens us, gives us power to overcome, power to rejoice in times of trouble and sorrow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've given to us brothers and sisters to help us, to pray for us, to encourage us along the journey. Thank you most of all that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, shed His blood. Not just another man dying, but the Son of God dying. Deity giving His life for us. The just dying for the unjust. The sinless dying for sinners. God loving us in His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh God, help us to be thankful. I pray that You'd open our hearts, Lord. Open our eyes that we can see the blessings and benefits that God has given to us. And Lord Jesus, may we give thanks to You today and tomorrow and the next day. And Lord, year in and year out, help us to be a people marked by giving of thanks. Don't let our conversation be full of, of corrupt communication. Don't let our communication be full of gripes and grumbles and murmurs and complaining. But Lord, I pray that You'd help us, that our conversation would be full of thanksgiving, giving glory to God, giving honor to Jesus for the blessings and benefits that He's bestowed upon our lives. Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts of any in this congregation that hasn't yet had a change of heart.
and been transformed from a grumbling, murmuring, complaining individual into an individual that's thankful to God for the blessings and benefits that the Lord provides. And we'll give you the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.